Here we go. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of Money Mondays. I am your host and creator, Alexis Mazord. If you are new here, Money Mondays is a platform created to be a source of information for children and minority communities. Uh, whether you are a um, not a minority, whether you are a consumer or you are an entrepreneur. So joining me here today, we have our special guest, Brent Lamberg. Brent, welcome. I can. Thank you, Alexis. So please give us a brief introduction as to who you are and what you do. Of course, and then obviously we'll go into a little more detail, whatever keeps the masses happy in the 30 minutes we have together. So again, Alexis, thank you for having me on your podcast. It's actually my very first podcast that I am appearing on. So, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm both excited and nervous at the same time, but hey, all good. Got to have the first podcast kind of get out of your way. So my name is Brent Lemberg. I am actually a life insurance agent based out of Miami Beach. I work for PHP agency. So we are an insurance brokerage in that we partner with 20 plus different A-rated carriers. So companies such as National Life Group, AIG, Mutual of Omaha, Foresters, just to name a few. So it allowed us to do the homework for you. So instead of you going to National Life Group and understanding what products they have, and then you go into AIG and doing the same thing and et cetera, et cetera, we do all the legwork. Okay. So that's like 30,000 foot view, who I am, what I do. Nice. Just bear me one second. I am trying to post our link to our Facebook page so that everybody can see us. Um, one second. Uh, here is the link. All right. And we are good to go. Okay. So like you said, you do all the work for the public. Correct. Can you go into a little bit more detail about retirement planning? What is the main objective when you're planning for your retirement? I mean, the main objective, if you think about it, is how do you want to live when you retire? That's like the $64 question, you know, because, and that takes, you know, planning, takes some conversations to get there because everyone has different needs and affordability. So let's say someone, you know, they're, you have a four year old person, you know, they think maybe they'll need like a hundred K, you know, per year throughout the course of retirement. So now it's about like, how do you kind of get to that? Like, what are going to be expenses, you know? So you have, the right life insurance in place that let's say if God forbid, you know, heart attack, cancer, or stroke, things like that will cover any type of medical expenses. Do you have anything left on a mortgage? Do you have anyone who may be dependent on you? Are you going to need to set aside any money for education for you know, children or grandchildren? Is there money that you want to leave towards a legacy once you, you know, leave this place, if you will? So there's many different factors. And I just kind of threw out for illustration purposes, a 40 year old person wanting maybe like, you know, a hundred K a year um, each year throughout the retirement. But it really comes from how do you want to live during your retirement? And then everything's case by case honestly, because Alexis, your needs are probably going to be very different than my needs than anyone who's tuning into this broadcast right now. So life insurance is not one size fits all. Okay. So when should you start planning? How much should you put away? Where do you keep the money? And what happens if you need access to it? These are all very good questions. So let me see if I can try and 
one at a time hit this. So obviously the sooner you start, the better for a few reasons. One, if I start putting money towards a policy when I'm 30, it's going to be cheaper because think about it. If I'm not going to retire until 65, 70, and I'm starting to put money in towards when I'm 30, I've got a longer time to keep putting money towards my premium and building, um, putting money towards my life insurance policy, whatever is been determined to be the annual premium versus if I'm 60 and I want to retire at 70, it's kind of like a race against time. Right. Plus if you're younger, for the most part, you're generally healthier. I say that with quotes because you know, you have the unfortunate stories where, you know, people get cancer at younger age. So not trying to make any type of blanket assumptions, but generally speaking, you know, 60, you're older, you're a higher risk class. So that will also affect, you know, the money you need to put towards a policy. So it's generally, you know, the younger, the better. Um, in terms of where to actually put it. So for example, there's a few different types of life insurance policy and I'll try and keep it high. Okay, so first you have term life and term is just what you expect. It's a specific term. So 15, 20, 25, 30 years. The problem with term is that most people can outlive it. So that's why, you know, it does, it rarely pays out because again, most people will outlive it, but it's cheap. So you're meant to buy a lot of it. Have you ever seen those commercials, you know, pop up on your TV and it says life insurance policy starting at 1142 a month? Yeah, absolutely. Think term life. It's cheap because you're meant to buy a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another form of term life called return of premium. Okay. Again, it's like it's like term life. The only difference is if you don't have to use the policy, you get your premium returned to you. Okay. So. So, for example, what we do is we show people how you can use life insurance like a private bank account. For example, if I told you what if there was a third way that you could pay for your child's college tuition. So right now, most people, if you're going to send your child off to college, it's either going to be you're hoping for a scholarship right. or student loans. But what if you could use life insurance to pay for the college tuition? Return a premium. You take out the return of premium for a specific term. So let's say your child is now five. Mm -hmm. You're going to go off to college at, you know, 18 mm -hmm. roughly, right? So maybe you take like a 15 year term policy to be able to cover the college tuition, right? Let's say you're able to get that free ride. Great. After 15 years, you haven't touched into that policy. When it expires, you get your premium returned to you. So you got the free ride for college and you end up getting all that money back in your premium. If you don't get the free ride, you don't have to worry about student loans because you can use the life insurance policy to pay for the college tuition. You could use life insurance policy to pay for specific events in life. Maybe you're you know, putting aside for a wedding you know, your child's wedding or someone like me who is Jewish, if parents would have, as soon as I was born, taking a term life policy for, let's say, you know, I was bar mitzvah when I was 12. You can, there's so much more to life insurance than just, okay, when I die, I know my family's taken care of. Right. The next type is called permanent life. Perfect. Now, permanent life typically goes to eight, to age like 121 so you're not supposed to outlive it unlike term life where it will lapse permanent life you it will not lapse okay. um permanent life comes with you know death benefits cash value but the biggest thing that there is in life insurance today both in term life and perm life is a thing called living benefits so there's four living benefits 
Okay, and I don't know if you've heard of this, but you have terminal illness, uh, chronic illness, critical illness, critical injury. Okay, so again, when I was alluding to before about the, like, for example, heart attack, stroke, cancer, you know, things of that nature, living benefits, if let's say you have, you know, skin cancer, pick any, pick anyone, and God forbid you have this $80,000 chemo bill should you, you know, get through your chemotherapy treatments, your insurance carrier will cut that check because of living benefits in your policy, and you won't have to be worrying about having to sell off assets or whatnot in order to pay for the chemo bill. Just kind of giving, you know, one example. In terms of another option, a little more on the financial side that we do with indexed annuities, okay, could also be an option for people that maybe have some sort of medical issue that may cause them to not qualify for life insurance. Because life insurance, remember, you have to qualify for. So even though we submit a policy, it's going to go through um, medical underwriting, depending on you know the carry and whatnot. So there's always a possibility that depending on someone's health history, they may not qualify for life insurance. An indexed annuity is a great vehicle for people that maybe have old 401ks. Can I pause you know? you right there, Brent? Can you actually explain to the people what an annuity is? Because I actually didn't know when I first heard about it. So I'm only going to focus on indexed annuities okay. simply because that's what we deal with. There's other annuities like variable, but then that requires additional licensing like series six, series seven kind of deals with more investment side and we're just insurance agents. So we only focus on indexed annuities. So that's the only one that I'm going to touch on. So for example, an indexed annuity, you can get the gains of the market to a cap. But if the market crashes, your account freezes so you don't lose a cent. Your fees are zero to maybe 0.9%. You'll have guaranteed income throughout retirement. Your money grows in the account tax-free. Um, you also have a long-term care benefit that kicks in. And you also have... And I literally, and this is kind of how freestyle, how you know it isn't scripted. There was one other thing. Oh, yeah. So you know how if like a 401k, you can't access the money until you're 59 and a half? With an annuity, you have access to the money after 10 years. Nice. So a lot of people don't know about that. So an annuity, for, for those of you who don't know, is actually a fixed sum that's paid out to people each year so that you can understand what Brent is actually telling you there. Annuity, um, actually, is it tax-free? You will, the money grows tax-free. So for example, you know how like in a 401k, when you go to finally be able to pull your money at the, once you're 59 and a half, mm -hmm. whatever money you go to pull, what is the minimum required distribution that you're supposed to pull at that time, you're gonna get taxed on that money. So that's the reason why you can't make the claim that your 401k is going to give you guaranteed income throughout retirement. Because let's say I have 600k in my 401k when I retire. How do you know that's going to get you through all of retirement? Right. You know, because you're going to get taxed every time you pull money from it. What if the market wants to crash at some point? Like, there's no guarantees. Whereas in an indexed annuity, you know, with how it's set up, you can make that guarantee that you turn on the guaranteed income after 10 years that you will have guaranteed income throughout retirement. Nice. But, but again, keep in mind that there's no such thing as a perfect product. Everything has a plus and it's minus. And I'm specifically talking about in an indexed annuity just kind of in a vacuum. You know, keep in mind that for depending on individual needs, the right strategy may include, you know, about you're moving some money into an index annuity, you're max funding your 401k from your current employer. 
making sure you have enough liquidity right now. So what is your income? What are your current expenses? What do you have in the bank? Because something like annuity, you know, even though after a year and a day, you can access 10% of it, you don't really want to. That is meant to kind of just grow. So one of the things you want to take into consideration is again, liquidity, because if someone doesn't have enough savings, doesn't have enough income coming in now, maybe they're not the greatest indexed annuity candidate. So again, I'm talking about the tool just strictly in a vacuum, but everything when it comes to life insurance, when it comes to retirement planning, Alexis, it's very, it's case by case. And you're gonna quickly find out that with a lot of questions, it's, I'm gonna be talking a little more theoretical case by case, as opposed to actual, you know, black and white answers, probably more like the shades of gray, if you will. <laughs> Um, so is there a limit or a restriction of what you can actually take the money out for if you needed to? Because I see your, you see medical bills, you see college. Not really. For example, our CEO, Patrick Bet David, started PHP from the cash value of his life insurance policy. Wow. That's awesome. You can yeah. start a whole business on PHP. That's how, that's how PHP started. That's incredible. Life insurance is a very powerful and versatile wealth building tool that most people don't realize. Again, going back to what I was talking about with living benefits, think of it like this, Alexis. If you were stuck in an elevator and an earthquake hit, would you want to be in an elevator with one core or five? You broke up a little there. Repeat that. Sorry. If you were stuck in an elevator and an earthquake hit, would you want to be in an elevator with one cord or five? You think five, right? Because five. it's going to be secure. Yeah. Exactly. So now let's say the earthquake is your life insurance policy. I mean, the elevator is your life insurance policy. Okay. Earthquake is, again, cancer or heart attack, right? which life insurance policy you think is more likely to pay out for you on your behalf? Cancer. One benefit or five? Five. That this is why we educate people on the benefits of life insurance because if you have a life insurance policy that's more than 10 years old, you don't have living benefits in it. If your life insurance policy is just some group life through your job, you don't have living benefits in it. It's, you know, and we just try and educate people on this because who else is looking out for the middle class with all this? Government isn't. Look at everything we just went through over the past year. Your job certainly isn't because they just dismissed you like you were nothing once the pandemic hit. They didn't take care or look out for you. So we are educating people on the power of life insurance, on how you know money works. We talk about the four um, the four quadrants of wealth: cash, stock, real estate, insurance, and the pros and cons of everything. And how so. What we do is so much more than just life insurance. Is educating people about you know, how money works, how to make and save money. So for example, when we meet with clients, first thing we're gonna wanna do is create that budget. So discuss, you know, what's your income, what's your debt, what are your expenses, because you wanna make sure that whatever is agreed upon between you and the clients, they can actually meet that monthly premium. And in order to do that, everyone needs to understand what is disposable income. You don't want to just be like, you know, okay, $200 a month for life insurance. What if you don't have disposable income? So that's why, you know, when it comes to making and saving money, first things that we do is sit down and kind of help them create a budget, understand disposable income. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. So how do you anticipate your post-retirement spending habits in order to facilitate the policy? Have you ever heard of something called Dimel, D-I-M-E-L? No. Okay, 
So what we do is, again, when it comes to trying to figure out how much money you would need in a policy, we go based on this theory called DIMO. So D stands for death or debt. And we go based on like, we do everything. So for example, if you've got, you know, 50K student loan debt, you know, maybe you want to be buried in a nice mausoleum, you know? So you put that money aside. That's one fact that you start weighing in. Income, let's say you make 100K a year. We do it then for 10 years. So income would be a million in coverage just based on income. Okay. Um, M is mortgage. You know, do you still have a mortgage on your home? Okay, yes, you do. It's X amount per year. You still have 15 years left on it. You factor into that. E is for education. You know, do you have any children? Are you planning, are they planning on going away to college? Kind of going back to what I was saying about the individual um, life insurance policies with the ROP. This is where that starts coming in when we start talking about E, education. Okay, they want to go away to school. Kids five you know, 13 years down the line, you know, with the way college switch is going up, you factor that in. That was the legacy. This part is kind of optional, but it means when you're gone, is there any money you want to keep leaving behind for the next generation? Because we educate people again on generational wealth. So L is for legacy. And so now we come up with the amount of coverage that you need and we kind of take it from there. But that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be all that coverage in one policy. Because remember, we're explaining to you return a premium. You know, are you sending them to college? Do you want to put money away for a wedding? Do you want to put away, away money for a sweet 16? So that lump sum coverage that you need could be both short, intermediate, and long-term needs, depending on, on how the conversation goes. And it could be three or four different policies that get you that coverage that you need just depending on everything that's why we say we can show people how you use life insurance like a private bank account mm. okay. um the policy itself can you tell us briefly what people should have in their policy even though it is a case by like what are the basics you should so that we can talk about the business aspect of it the basics you should have in a policy so probably going to rehash a little bit of this again, but obviously everything's with death benefits. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely want to make sure cash value. What is cash value? Again, it's money that's going to grow in your policy. So for example, if I'm funding the policy at my target, okay, everything above the target that I put in money towards, so let's say my target is 200, okay? If I put in 250 a month, that difference goes to build my cash value. In a whole life policy, when the person passes, the family only gets the debt benefit, the company gets the cash value. In a universal life policy, the family gets both death benefit and cash value. Mm, that's a great piece of information. So, so definitely want that. Definitely, again, living benefits. Um, not every carrier has all four living benefits. For example, National Life Group does have all four living benefits in their term life policy. I believe AIG only has three of the four. They've got the terminal illness, chronic illness, critical illness, but they don't have the critical injury. So, but you definitely want the living benefits as well. I mean, I would say right off the, you know, you definitely want all those. But again, everything's going to be based on our conversation. Honestly, there's nothing that's real black and white about um, insurance, especially when it comes to the right permanent life policy, the right strategy. It is, it is a conversation. It really is. Again, for example, I mean, I know we have five minutes left, but. Let's take three people. I got a 30 year old, a 40 year old, and a 50 year old. And we're talking long term about, you know, money and whatnot. A 30 year old may focus on, I want to make as much money as possible to have money later on in life. That person may be better off going to a financial advisor because they're going to focus on making money, period. 40 year old may be like, 
I want to make money, but I want to make sure there's going to be something there for me. That may be the type of person that splits between, you know, working with a financial advisor, setting stuff aside, you know, max funding their 401k at work, but moving some money into an indexed annuity from, you know, they've got a lump sum they're looking to move from the bank or old 401ks and whatnot. A 50 year old may be like, look, I don't have a whole lot of time between when I want to now and retire. I can't afford if the stock market crashes to try and wait and hope my account recovers. I prefer safety. I prefer to know that I'm not going to lose a cent. They may prefer to just want to put their money into an index, index annuity. Mm. That's why, again, so much case by case. That's really what it comes down to. Grant, how did you get started in this business? And what advice do you have for those who are looking to get started themselves? So I actually got brought into the business from a mutual friend. So my the mutual friend that we have actually lives a few blocks away from me here in Miami Beach. But the guy who brought me into the business is up in Orlando. He does real estate along with the life insurance. And honestly, getting your life insurance license is online. You can have your license in a week or two. And if you're with PHP, you've got access to 20 plus carriers. So if you work with PHP, you have access to 20 plus carriers. That same license, you could go and work just for NLG or just for AIG or just for Mutual of Omaha or just for Foresters. But again, with PHP, you have options. You own your book of business, so you own your clients. Unlike with other companies where they own your clients, if you leave, you lose your clients, you lose your residuals, because in insurance, there's also passive income. So for example, you know how like, for example, you're also a realtor, so you make you make a sale, you close on a home, and it's one and done. You're on to the next sale. It's not like if that person takes out a 30-year mortgage, you get residuals for every year they're still in the home. Right. But in insurance, for every year thereafter that that policy is still in effect, you get residuals. Wow. So, there, so that is one example of passive income. There's other examples because, again, going back to real estate, you know, you have a broker agent relationship. So, you know, an agent is always going to be at their specific percentage. You know, if it's a 30, 70, you know, percent ratio between a broker and agent. So the agent is always going to max out at 70 percent their commission. A broker can always keep growing the income because they can keep adding on agents. So they can have 10 agents making, you know, sales a month. And the next month they bring on two more and they can keep growing because they're keep constantly building a team. Similar for a lot of insurance is that we also have the ability to build teams, build an agency. So that's the other way we can get residuals is because you have to spread of your override. The biggest difference is that with a broker, you're... 30% is coming from the agent commission, correct? It's not paid separately, but the 30% that the broker gets is coming from the agent. Right. When it comes to when it comes to insurance, the spread between let's say myself and another agent is paid directly from the insurance company. So the agent gets their own percentage and then the spread that I would get directly from the insurance company. So there's a lot of similarities between real estate and insurance and just, I you know, mortgage and insurance. It's just the business models are similar. They really overlap well. Similar clientele, you know, married, family. In fact, workers. I have, sorry to cut you off. I have sure. um, a cousin. I call him an uncle because, you know, I'm Haitian and out of respect, you, you got to call him uncle. But he's a cousin of mine. He's actually been in the real estate industry as a whole for over 30 years, way before I was even born. And he tells me he's he has a real estate license. He's also a signing mm -hmm. agent and he sells insurance. And he says he loves it out of all three insurance is his favorite license because he gets to make the most money. But he uses the other two licenses in order to get this client for the insurance so yeah it's it's all interconnected but he said definitely if if, if i had to pick between between all three i would go with the life insurance and and think about it okay if you were what's going to make you more valuable having one tool of three 
you know, the more tools you have, especially when there's synergy amongst everything makes the most sense. So for example, you know, you're a realtor, sell a home, you're closing, you also take care of their life insurance at the same time, whatever their needs, whatever needs are specific to that client. Now, that client may not know someone who's in the market for a home, but they may know someone who's in the market for life insurance. So now you have another client for the life side, you take care of them, and that person may be like, Alexis, you're also a realtor. I love the job that you did taking care of me with life insurance. You're a very honorable person in how you handle your business. I'm going to send my friend your way because they're looking for a home. The more you have to offer, the more people you can network with. And so it can help both businesses if you network it right. right. You know, if you focus on one more than the other, eh, but if you but if you have that right push pull between the two, it ends up being win win, honestly, in my opinion. Absolutely. Before we go, Brian, is there any other like in-depth kind of information that you'd like to share with our viewers today? In-depth insider knowledge, if insider. you will. Yeah. <laughs> um, Give us the juicy secrets. Oh. I mean, <laughs> what more is there to say? I mean, PHP, again, we are only on year 12 right now, so we're still a baby company. Um, we're about 19,000 licensed agents strong. You know, we have offices in 49 out of 50 states and Puerto Rico. Our goal by 2029 is to be 500,000 licensed strong. And we're still privately held. We haven't gone public yet. We haven't gone international yet. So it's one of those things where the opportunity to really help people and make money is one of the companies on the upswing. So, and besides that, again, I do believe, I hope I've hit a lot of important points when it comes to life insurance. Um, living benefits is a real game changer. You know, just knowing that, you know, you have the ability to do something out there, if God forbid you should have, you know, heart attack, cancer, stroke, you know, can pay for you. So the final point I will make, and you know, it was a pleasure being on here tonight as well. You know, think about it when it comes to insurance. Most people, we insure our phone. So I'm trying to make sure it lines. There you go. Okay. We insure our car. We insure our home. Why do we not insure our family? You know, it's like your car, phone, home. They're all very important. Don't get me wrong. But they're all materialistic. They can all be replaced. As painful as obviously something happening to your car or your home is painful, it can be replaced. Your family cannot. So if there is someone that depends on you and your income to survive, why are you not taking the time to make sure that they're protected? You know, because the bottom line is life insurance, it may cost a little more than you think, but I hope after the 30 minutes that we've had to talk today, you also understand it protects a lot more than you think. Absolutely. It's it's very beneficial. If you don't have life insurance, you have just been informed. So go ahead and contact Brent with PHP so you guys can get your policy underway, right? <laughs> anyway. Thank you so much, Brent. It was a pleasure having you today. I have learned a wealth of information just by speaking with you. Um, your social media handle, people will be able to just Google you, Brent Lindbergh, correct? Yeah, you can. Um, you'll find me LinkedIn, Facebook is just Brent Lindbergh. Uh, Instagram will be Brent Lindbergh Official. Thank you too hard to find. Again, it was such a pleasure. This has been a, actually a long time in the making, you guys, months. So <laughs> I'm so happy that we finally were able to bring this uh, juicy, great information. Life insurance, really, do, don't sleep on it, guys. It's really important for the rest of your life. Um, not even for the rest of your life. If you have anything like the pandemic, if you have um, 
some illnesses, like Brent said, if you want to go to college, anything really ensure yourself because you never know what the future can hold. Like last year, how many people would have benefited if they had life life insurance? Is that something that can use it for? Is that a, oh, was that a question for me? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? I wasn't sure. I thought you were making a close <laughs> comment at all. Uh, being as though a lot of people were jobless during the pandemic, it, it, does that give them a little cushion too? Or is it strictly for... It could have. Um, it certainly could have. One of the benefits, though, going back a little more towards the business side, is that insurance is proven to be recession-proof. Like, there's always a need for insurance. And then in times of crisis... When people panic more, the need goes up because people then want to make sure that their families are insured, money and assets are insured. So, yes, it can always help whether it's because you're looking for a backup income source or you're looking to protect everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. This has been a great show again. Thank you, Brent. Um, I wasn't able to collect any questions this time because of the format of the, the live, but um, if you have any questions for myself or Brent, I will be able to see them afterwards. And then if anything, we can invite Brent over for a part two, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you again in two weeks on Monday. We have the credit sheet coming on. So that's not next Monday, but the Monday after. All right. So we'll see you in February. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Oh, it's right here for me.